Welcome to my new calculus channel. I'm John Gabriel and this is lesson two in which we'll be talking about again the slope of a straight line and discussing the concept of change in X and or Y. But before we do that, <coughs> let's revise what we did in lesson one. In lesson one we saw that all straight lines have slope under the ancient Greek scheme where the slope is determined by angle and most straight lines have slope under the modern scheme of Newton and Leibniz where slope is determined by the tangent ratio. So we covered quite a few facts in that first lesson and we saw that although all straight lines have slope, we don't refer to that slope as the derivative of a straight line unless that particular straight line is tangent to a, a non-linear curve. So the derivative is the slope of a straight line, but it's a special kind of straight line, one that is tangent to a non-linear curve. After all, a straight line cannot be tangent to itself. There is no way a straight line can intersect another straight line in one point and be tangent to it. So the original definition of tangent line has been misconstrued and misunderstood by academics in the last few hundred years. Uh, but Webster has a good definition for tangent line. Um, I think one that's that originates from 1521 or somewhere around there. Uh, the first use is in 1521. I'm not quite sure. At any rate, uh, let's continue with lesson two and see that the rise and run of any straight line is a finite difference, not a change in X and Y. Neither the inclination angle nor the trigonometric tangent ratio ever change for a given straight line. Let's see. So in this picture here that I have on the screen, I can move any of these green points. And you will instantly notice that these triangles here are similar, these right angle triangles. So while the, wh while the, the rise and run are different finite differences, there are not changes in X and Y. These are all predetermined. I mean, we can put this here and there's a finite difference there and a finite difference there for any straight line. Nothing is changing. Yes, nothing is changing. Neither the angle nor the tangent ratio over here. Both the rise and the run are finite differences. So the rise, in this case, is 1.64 and the run is 4.92. Let me move another one of the points there. <coughs> and the rise changes to 2.5 and the run changes to 7.5. But really, there is no change in X and Y. And in, in fact, the rise and run are always equivalent fractions. So uh, the ratio is always the same, and nothing is changing. So these two particular points here are always the same, right? I mean, those two points are the same, and those two points are the same. The slope of this line never changes. So <coughs> I'd like to actually just talk a little bit more about that before I continue. And let me do that by switching over to a notepad here <coughs> where I can write. So if I go over here, you'll see that if we had a nonlinear curve like this, whoops, something like that, and then a tangent line there, we could actually draw that line there as a tangent line. Let's Oh, wrong mistake there. That's too bad. <laughs> Didn't want to do that either. Okay, well anyway, this line here is a tangent line, and this here is a secant line, and of course, as you can see over here, 
nothing is changing. All we're doing is just moving these green points along. And so we really have the only geometric object that has a straight line, that has a slope, is a straight line. If it's a nonlinear curve, then it has a tangent at that point, and the slope of the tangent line at that point is called a derivative, yes? It's called a derivative. So, strictly speaking, it's only accurate to call the slope of a straight line a derivative if that straight line is tangent to a nonlinear line. So let's go back to our demonstration of lesson two. What we've seen here is that both the rise and the run are finite differences that are in proportion because every similar triangle, every, every triangle, every right angle triangle is similar. It's always the same, right? So this here is always three ninths. This particular ratio here is three-ninths or one-third. Uh, a lot of you never understood what is a fraction. If you write down, for example, one-third, like that, what that means is that this bottom part here is the number of equal parts the unit has been divided into. So, for example, if this is the unit, then three means three equal parts and the top part here tells us how many of those parts. So if, for example, we were to write two-thirds, then we are really looking at any two of these, yes? Any two of these, or whichever two you'd like to choose. That's what two-thirds means. And the bottom part tells us how many equal parts the unit has been divided into. So we really have, in this particular lesson, a ratio that is equivalent to any other ratio for these for the straight line and for any other straight line and any other given angle this is always true so to recap nothing is changing uh, dy delta y and delta x are finite differences not changes in x and y and they're all predetermined for any position any two positions on this line they're all predetermined so no change, no change is taking place. You will often hear the term or the expression instantaneous rate of change. It's very deceptive. In fact, it's wrong. And it's only true in the case where there's a time differential. But I'm not going to talk much about that now because I'll discuss it in a later lesson to show you that that's the only time we can talk about a rate of change when there's a time differential and it's not instantaneous at any rate <laughs> excuse the pun so that's the content of lesson two you can also go to the new calculus site the course site and read up on the basic theory of slopes and also how we got the modern definition of slope which is covered in lesson one and I also recommend that if you already know calculus to read this article here which is the preface a short comparison between the new calculus and Newton's flawed calculus, which will give you some insight into the rest of the lessons and where we're going from here. And so in lesson three, we'll talk about the tangent line and the definition and learn some more facts, not necessarily popular facts, but facts nonetheless. And uh, one of the reasons that mainstreamers don't like me very much, but I prefer to publish truth and be counted for it rather than be silent and forgotten. So once again, my name is John Gabriel and this is the New Calculus Channel. I hope you'll join me again for Lesson 3, which will be on the tangent line. Thank you very much.